Hey y'all, it's Steve, Hobo with Wood. And today we're gonna to design an earring stand. This can be something you make from mama for her nightstand or a retail situation. So hang around, this is gonna be a good one. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you know I'm making earrings. And if you're not using your waste material, when you're working with some really thin uh, plywoods or really thin hardwoods, you've got a, a design on the laser and there's some material there that's not being used, that's a prime opportunity to lay an earring design on there and cut out a few pair of earrings on what would be waste material that you can turn into revenue. And if you're not selling earrings, you should be because you've got a lot of really good material that you can turn into revenue that you're currently throwing out the trash. Even the silliest earrings uh, can sell for anywhere from five to ten dollars a pair and what would have been trash. So in one of my last designs you I shown you how I do just that. I had a, a project on there it was the coffee cup holders and there's a large area there that was going to be thrown away. But before I did, I threw in a couple of designs of earrings. And so I ended up creating all kinds of little cute earrings. These are some sea turtles. And this one is kind of uh, hit or miss. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. These are the, what are the, the Highland Cows. These are requests that I get from people. I guess the Highland Cow is, Highland Cow is all the rage in the craft stores. Uh, and that's done out of uh, walnut these others this was just out of some uh, cheap birch ply I think I had but I've got earrings galore so I need some way to display these in my retail locations so I'm going to create a little stand that I'm going to knock out really quick and show you how I do this you can do it yourself and then I'll have the files available at a secret location. <laughs> All right, so let's jump in here to Lightburn and see what it takes to design this. All right, so first, when I'm designing, I try to think of my diode viewers. And your average diode, and if you're buying, if you're, you're, you don't have a shop where you're processing your wood, and you're buying a lot of material on, online uh, on Amazon or other places, a lot of the, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of the wood that you can get is already cut down to 30 or 300 by 300 uh, or 12 by 12. And so that's what I start with. I start with a template, a, a, uh, a tool path, and I'm gonna make it 300 by 300 millimeters because that 12 by 12 material, it's not 12 inches by 12 inches. It's closer to 300 by 300. Put that in the center of my page. Now, <clears throat> that is my work area for a 300 by 300 piece of material, which fits comfortably on a diode bed. And I want to get the largest piece that I can out of this. So now I'm going to... Uh, deselect that draw a new rectangle actually not a square um, let's see what we can get here I want to keep an area that I can lock down my corners of my material on my work bed and what's those dimensions there if we put that in the center of the page uh, that's going to give us 275 by 235 or let's just let's just make that 275 height I don't have any of my aspect ratios locked right now and um, 240 what's that give us that'll that'll work you know what just say 250 
K. Now, if you noticed that left the center of the page, and I had to recenter it. That's because I had my anchor point down here in the lower left instead of having it in the center. During this design process, if you haven't been using your anchor points right here, you're going to see me utilize that numerous times and locating it in several different locations throughout this design process to minimize how many times I have to relocate a, an object. All right, so there we've got it in the center, everything centered up, and uh, now we're going to put some radiuses on this board because this is going to be our stand, our backboard for our earring stand. So if I'm uh, 250 millimeters in width, uh, divide that by three is about 80 something. So uh, let's come down here to our radius and let's just look at an 80 radius, 80 millimeter radius and see what that looks like. Click on the corner there, click on this corner there. Uh, and that's it's a little wide actually. Uh, but I think I need to have as much width as possible because that's another thing to think about. This is a display stand that I'm planning to put um, nine pairs of earrings on. And if my average earring is one and a quarter, which is really kind of big, but we're going to say one and a quarter, which is, um, let's lock that race aspect ratio 1.25 inches. Go back to millimeters. All right, so my average earring, let's control D. Because this is something to think about when you're laying out your design. If you don't need to display nine, it's something you want to make that you can just put eight pairs of earrings on. You can do set, set this, know how to lay this out accordingly. So control D, duplicate that pair. We're gonna move this over. And we're gonna control D, we're gonna move this over. All right, so see that width now is not, it looked a little bulky at first, but if I'm gonna try and put nine pairs of earrings on there, it's gonna to need to be at least that wide. Okay, in fact, I'm going to, I'm gonna put this on a tool path and set this out of the way for right now because I might need that here in a minute. <clears throat> All right, so there's my basic design. Um, now, the material that I'm working with today is 2.25 millimeters wide. So now I'm gonna create another tool path. Make it uh, 2.25 millimeters. And let's make it uh, 12 millimeters. <clears throat> I'm just pulling random numbers. Oh, I have my aspect ratio locked. Let's unlock that 2.25. There we go. And 12 millimeters. All right, now this is going to be a slot that I'm going to cut into this board. And some people, okay, this is going to be a slot that I'm going to cut that I'm going to insert a hook in here that's going to be the, made from the same material. It's only 2.25 millimeters, and I'm making this cut 2.25 millimeters because the kerf of my laser is going to cut off enough material out of, uh, from this slot and when I cut out my hook that it's going to fit in there so I can actually cut it to the thickness of the material. All right, 2.25 and 12 millimeters. Now I need to duplicate uh, this. And I could use an array tool, but I don't know what my settings need to be or where the spacing needs to be. So let's grab this and now let's um, duplicate this twice. Control D twice. Move this down and move, oops, select them all. Oh, can't 
can't select them all because I didn't have it so one, two, three, four, five, and six. That should be one. There we go. All right, and now that's starting to look pretty good. I'm gonna group those, and I'm going to grab all of these and group these, and something I should have done to begin with, and being careful not to grab my little slot, grab those and group those. All right, now I can select that group, this group, and this group, and tell it to distribute them did that work? No, it didn't do anything. I don't think. Just this group, this group, and this group. There we go. Wrong one. Distribute them vertically. All right, now those are evenly spaced. And now with those all selected, I can actually move that up and down the board where I want her to be. About like that. And now I'll select the board and tell it to align to the center. Okay. So there's about where those need to lay. So now I can take this and I'm going to have it about like that. Because my hook is going to go in, come down, and stick out right, probably right in there. And this is once you see the design come together, this will start to make sense. All right, so now I can use my array tool. I need three columns and my y space or x spacing. Come on. Keep increasing my X spacing until I get that about where I want her. About like that. And now let's create that third one. That didn't quite do that. All right. Nope, that won't work. Array's not gonna work here. So we'll just say cancel. Control D and we'll just move it over here at about where I want her. Control D. Now those are kind of spaced where I want them to be. Select all of those. Now, there we go, distribute those evenly. No. That didn't work either. So let's take this one, select that, align it to center. this and we need to ungroup these group them in pairs group now I can take that and tell that to align to center group this pair and tell this to align to center all right that's looking pretty good and Let's group these. Now that we've already centered in the board, so now we'll tell this to group to center to here. And that's looking pretty smart. Now I need to get all these on the same level. So select them all, align to the top. That is looking good. And now let's take all of these, group them, control D, duplicate them. And we'll just use the arrow keys to bring it down. Control D to duplicate it again. And bring those down. And that's looking pretty good. All right, so now, starting to get a backboard and looking like we want. Got our slots oriented where we want them. Um, now let's do some personalizing. So we can get rid of all of this. And 
let's go to my art library, get my logo, add it to the graphic, bring her up here, control, zoom her out. And this is for my retail location, so I'm, I am putting my brand on here. If you were doing this for home, you might put a I love you something or just for mama, whatever, anything you want to put on there, or just leave it blank and let the woods beauty show through. Um, and now let's do a contact. Uh, hobo. Actually, we know what we will do all caps. Hobo with wood at gmail.com. Put that on the black layer and select and center. No, not right. Center. There we go. And I'm gonna bring, actually, bring her down a little bit because those earrings are gonna be hanging here. We want that to be visible below the earrings. All right. All right. So I've got a backboard designed. Now let's move on to our hooks. Okay, before I do anything with the hooks, we can, we're can we going to use that toolpath over and over, so we're going to keep that. So I'm going to come from here. I'm going to select all of that and group all of that. And we're going to just set it over here out of the way. It's going, my computer getting a little slow here. There we go. In fact, we'll just set it off the work bed. All right, now we need to create some hooks that I can actually hang the earrings on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with, and taking into consideration here the thickness of my material, which is 2.25 millimeters, I'm going to start with a... Um, a multiple of about, let's say, um, just around around multiple of five. So we're going to say, uh, and actually, you know what you can do? You can just say, undo that, and let's do a cut path, a rectangle. And we're going to actually tell it. <clears throat> right now, we're working with um, no, and I'm doing, I'm going to do all this in real time, folks. I'm not going to do any editing of this. We're going to do a square, not a rectangle. And why isn't that doing a square? Oh, because I didn't select square. Square. Told you, I'm not going to do any editing. There's a square, and we're going to make this 2.25 millimeters. I didn't lock the aspect ratio, so we'll just do it again. There we go. All right, so now that's 2.25 millimeters. Now we're going to lock the aspect ratio, and we're going to multiply this times... What does 6 give us? We'll try that. So at 6 times the width, I'm going to make a toolpath. Actually, deselect that. I'm going to now make a toolpath. And this one will be a rectangle and it needs to be the 2.25 and it doesn't really matter about the height 2.25 2.25 tab and now I'm gonna come up here and grab the center once I get that little circle with the crosshairs I'm in the center of that line and I'm going to draw it down here until it snaps into the center right there. When I get a zero with two crosshairs, I'm in the center of that square. So that's where that's going to be placed. This is the thickness of my backboard. 
now I'm going to draw another rectangle. This will be on a cut path. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to start where I get that intersection. Those circle with the crosshairs tell me I'm right where that intersects. And I'm going to draw that up to that till I get those crosshairs. Now my selection tool. Now I'm going to be able, now I've got that and that is the rectangle selected. I can see my dimensions. The width is fine. The width is what it's going to be. Now using my anchor tools because I want this to change from um, where I want to change it from. Let's change it from here and we're going to change the height to 25 millimeters. Uh, I left my aspect ratio locked. Undo. Unlock my aspect ratio and 25. Alright. Now I'm going to control D, duplicate that, and I'm going to hit my uh, period key, rotating that, and I'm going to draw this down to here until I get my crosshairs telling me that's at that intersection. Now I'm going to hit control D, and I'm going to hit the period button again, and I'm going to grab it there those crosshairs and bring it to here or here let's let's look at here oh, oh there we go and put those crosshairs now I'm going to change my height to uh, and, I, and I'm going to leave that locked there unlocked aspect ratio and I'm going to change the height to 12 yeah I like that okay are you starting to see a hook? Do you see what I'm doing? All right. First thing, I'm going to select this rectangle. This is A. I'm going to hold my shift key and I'm going to select this toolpath. That's B. So A subtract B is this right here. A subtract B. Now that I've subtracted that, I've got that 2.25 millimeter gap right there. Now I'm going to put some radiuses on some things. This square that is selected is 13 and a half millimeters. So, um, but then this is not, this is in fact, what is that? Let's look at our ruler. This is only 5.62 millimeters. So uh, let's do two millimeter radius and see what that looks like. Say OK. Select our radius tool. And let's do a two millimeter radius. And it's two millimeters because I put in the value of two and I'm working in millimeters. So now I can just come here to this corner. Select that and select that. And I'm putting radiuses on there because this is what's going to be inserted into the slot. And anytime you've got to insert pieces, anytime you, you can put a radius on it, it makes putting together a lot simpler. And I'm going to put a radius on this one just for looks. And I'm going to put two radiuses on here because this is where I've got to put the earring holder onto. All right, so now I've got that. So let's take and so get our selection tool. And if I got these lined up correctly, I can now just select those two and tell it to weld. There we go. And now select those and tell it to weld. Oh, I don't have, I got too many of them there. All right, so let's select those two and tell it to weld. Oh, what happened there? Undo. What happened? Where'd you go? Where'd my rectangle go? I've been having some silly things going on here. Huh. All right. Well, we'll just duplicate that. I don't know what happened. Control D, rotate, and bring that back up here. Let's grab that. Put her back in place. 
Now, select those two, tell it to weld. There we go. Select these two, tell it to weld. And now we can select these two and weld. No, it's not giving me a weld option. I guess I don't have them quite lined up. Let's try this. There we go. And I didn't put a radius back on there, so let's select our radius, radius there. All right, so there is a hook. That hook will be used in here. So this back piece right here will slide into that slot and then slide down holding it in place. So I'll end up needing at least nine of these and I would actually probably make at least a dozen or more so that I've got spares when they break. So let's set that over to the side. Now I need to create an easel for this to stand on. And another thing that I think about when I'm creating, all right, this whole backboard was one solid piece of wood. This is going to take up that much of it and actually I could do a little something here. I could take and rotate that like so. Take that. Oh, ungroup those. Put those back as a group. Group. Rotate that like so. And now you see how little waste there is there. Now I've got all of this area to make my easel pieces. All right, so let's make an easel. Let's do, in fact, let's just see how much space there is here. So there tells me I've got 280 by 170 or 180 or so workable workspace there to create my easels. But let's start with uh, 200 and see. Let's do 100 millimeters and 250 millimeters. All right, let's start there. Now let's create another rectangle. And see, when, I, when I'm designing, I, I, I kind of do it back asward, if you will, because I'm thinking about the material that I've got to work with first and then make my design work within the material that I have. Because if you create your design without regard to what you have to work with, then you might find yourself in a one mel of a hess whenever you come time to cut stuff out. All right, so let's do this one. Um, so I just say 45 millimeters high. And um, how wide does that one? That was 100. So let's say this is 100 as well. And now hold my shift key and align those to bottom and to the left. Now that's centered up there. Okay, now this rectangle here is 45 millimeters tall. We're going to put a radius on it and let's do um, Half of 45 is 22 and a half. Uh, let's just say, let's say 30 millimeters and see what that looks like. 
30 millimeters. Where did my other, I undid something. There we go. There, and now let's, 30 millimeter radius there. Uh, and that's still a little tall, so let's actually, and then if you've selected a radius and you want to undo it, you can just put it right back there and click it again, it'll undo it. Let's make that a 40 millimeter radius. That looks better. All right, now with this point and the radius being an anchor point, and I'm going to come up here. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let's put a radius on the back of this. How how wide is this one? Again, this one is 100 millimeters. So let's do 25. We'll do a fourth of that, 25 millimeters. All right, now I've got that anchor point and an anchor point here. I'm going to draw a line. Come up here and find that anchor point, which is right there when I get my crosshairs and bring it down here to find that anchor point. Crosshairs, there. Okay. Now, um, I can start editing these. Here, if I try to look at nodes, why does it do that when I hit my nodes? What happened? I got something going screwy wrong here with my software today, people. Where did that rectangle go? All I did was hit nodes and now it's gone. No, it's there, but not visible. Let's put it on a different layer. Still not visible. It's showing output, it's saying to show. Put it back on here. Oh my, all right, the joys of doing this live. All right, that's selected. That's saying to show and to output and it's on the red layer, but you can't see it. All right, delete. We'll just do another one. We can come here to this corner and draw up to about where it was and say there. So this was 45, not cap locks tab. All right, there. And it had a radius of 40, but we're gonna actually do a radius of 50 this time. Come on, radius. kind of trouble today. Radius. Oh, I'm trying to do a 50 radius on a 45. You can't do that. Let's just take it to 45 then. Man, golly. There we go. That takes it all the way to the bottom. And I like that. So let's, and I know some of y'all were screaming at me. I can hear you. All right, put that down in the bottom. Now let's look at the nodes again, if it let us. All right, and now the node moved because I went to a larger radius, so I can take this node and bring her up here to where I think she's at. Come back to here. Yep, yep, that looks good. I'm going to go into node editing. I'm going to say B for break. Break it here and I'm going to break it here and I select this part of it and I'm going to hit the delete key 
Now I'm gonna select this rectangle and I'm gonna hit the B for break here. And come up here to this node and hit the B for break here. And select this side and hit the delete key. Okay, now I just need to connect these by dragging that node back and bring it to it and drag this node back. Oh, there's two of them there. Let's hit you, go away, delete. There we go. All right. So now we're starting to get an easel. Now I need to put a slit in here for the easel to sit down into. So let's start with a toolpath. Deselect that. Get a rectangle. Come to our toolpath. And I'm going to draw a toolpath that's going to be 2.25 millimeters wide. Boy, that was close. 2.25. And now I'm going to bring this over here. I didn't mean to draw another toolpath. Let's undo that. Select. Now bring that over here. And now I need to rotate it until I get that lined up and that's looking good now I want to have uh, let's have that slot go in there uh, 15 millimeters so let's make this overall height about 15 with that anchor point there at that and then let's say tab uh, so now I've got to change my rotation a little bit more should have set my height to begin with and I'm looking to get this line here pretty much lined up on the right angle. And then I can bring this corner down here. And I'll need to bring it up just a little bit so they overlap. So holding my shift and the arrow button Now, using my Boolean tools over here, I'm going to say A, select my, e, select my easel, subtract B by selecting toolpath. And now we've got a slot there for that to cut down into. Now I need two more slots. These will be easier to do going to be 2.5 millimeters, 2.25, and let's do um, 15 millimeters in width. 15 and 2.25. All right. I'm going to need two of these, so select and control D. And I want to bring one of them. No, I didn't mean to do that, dummy. Grab the middle. There we go. I'm going to bring one of them up here. About there. And bring one of them down here. Hit the period key to rotate it. And that one's actually a bit tall. So if I've got that right on the line, which I don't, so we'll grab that and bring her up here on the line. So now you see she's overlapped. So I can move my anchor keys to the center here, the center bottom, and I want to reduce this in height 
by 15 to 10 and hit tab, you see it just drops it straight down. If I didn't have the anchor point set there, undo, and if the anchor point was in the middle and I said to do that to 10, so I just shrunk it to the middle. So, put her at the bottom and tail it 10 millimeters. And now to draw it down, I like that. That's 10 millimeters. And we'll do the same thing here. Now here, since we've got it aligned, well, we will have it aligned to the there. We're gonna bring that anchor point up here and tail it 10 millimeters. And now it shrunk it to the wall. All right, so there's 10 and 10. All right, now same thing. I need to do A, select the easel, subtract B. A, subtract B. Select it, there we go, and there is one side of the easel, we're going to control D, duplicate that, hit our period key twice to rotate it. Now, is that going to, well, I can't quite get her there, but I can get her here. Now, and then see if I would have, well, actually, you know what, I might can. If I bring this down, Now I can bring this yeah it's gonna be awful close but I can make that work there I have it all is that gonna be yep because I'm 300 millimeters by 300 millimeters, so there the combined height is only 295. Now I can select just this one. And here's where you can use your nesting tools. Not your nesting tools, your docking tools. I've got just that one selected. In fact, what I can do, if I come up here, move that away, move it up, First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell it with zero padding to nest left. And that should dock that sucker right up on there. What's the hold up, bub? Oh, I've got a not responding. Okay, I've got something going on. I'm, it might be time to restart my computer here. But I ain't gonna do it in the middle of this design. We'll wait for it and see what happens. Unless it just crashes. Oh, joy. Because none of this is saved. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Happy, 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 joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy, joy. Happy, happy, joy. Happy, 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 joy, joy. Well, Well, I am sad to say it looks like we are foobard, but I'm hoping, 
I'm hoping that when this crashes, it's going to have saved a backup of this automatically. And so when I bring her back open, it'll ask me if I want to bring this up. I'm hoping. Oh, there we go. You waited it out. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Now I'm going to save this. You can see that the docking worked. It docked that right up against there. And I'm going to file save as. Now when I'm doing stuff like this, I go to my desktop and this is what I call work in progress. So I do WIP, work in progress, and save. Now that's saved on my desktop as my whip. So if something goes screwy like this again and it crashes, I can always go back and open my whip and go right back to work. So now I docked that to the left. Now I'm going to see if I can dock that down without crashing the system. Dock down. Yeah. Good thing I saved that. Because we got another non response. It's not doing nothing. I'm now locked out. I can't I can move my mouse around, but I there's there's the non responding. This is a brand new computer. It's supposed to be a really great gaming computer with a great graphics card and I think I've got too, too much information going on here. Once this catches up this time, I'll save it again and close light burn and reopen it and see what happens. Okay, and we're back. Uh, let's cross our fingers that that reboot fixed those little bugs and those issues and this, our whip is in place and this is a valuable lesson. Anytime you're designing projects and you're doing some really in-depth design work and you're 10-15 minutes into it, you might want to start saving it periodically just in case there's a power outage, power surge, or your computer starts doing stupid stuff. You don't want to be an hour into it like I just was and then have an issue that you can't resolve. So let's see if I can open the whip. Open. And there we go. Okay, we're back in business. So there's our backboard. There's our two legs for the easel, our hooks. Now I need some cross members or cross braces, one for the bottom and one to go across here. Now they need to be the width of the board and the board is 275 millimeters. So let's do a new rectangle cut path 275 millimeters and the height, that's going to be just under an inch at 24. Let's do uh, 20 millimeters. All right. Now we need to put in our slots to interlock with our pieces. And... That's not going to be too relevant. It needs to be uniform on either side for the bottom and for the top. So if we come, if we bring this, this select it, if we bring this down here to the corner. All right, what happened? 
250 wide, not just 275 tall, so 250. So here you see, again, using the anchor tools. I've already positioned this here. So that's my anchor point. So I'm gonna change this anchor up here and I'm gonna tell this to go to 250 and that draws it into where I want her to be. All right, now, um, this was 10 millimeters, right? Grab our arrow, come over here and double check it. Yep, 10 millimeters, so okay. So let's draw a tool path. This one it will be 2.25 wide, 2.25 and 10 millimeters tall. And I'm gonna need several of these. So I'm gonna go to control D. That'll give me two. And this should be back on a cut pass. Grab one of these, bring her down here. Grab the other one, bring her over here. And this piece let's um hmm. So that's just a little one inch square that I'm going to use as a tool path. Put it in the corner, grab this corner, done. Okay, now A, subtract B. A was already selected, now hold my shift key, select the toolpath and subtract it. And let's put a radius on here. Um, Come on, there and there. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. That'll be for up here. Is that going to work? I think that'll work. Let's rotate that. That's definitely going to work for the bottom and the back side, centering that up. And then that's going to put here to here. So, control D, I think I'm making it harder than it needs to be. I think that's going to work, period. Yeah, that should work. All right. So there's a brace to snap in there. Oh, no, didn't think about the, the overall height of that is a problem, or could be a problem. 
if that's only going to come down 10 millimeters and I need it to be sitting flat, then this overall height can't be more than 20 millimeters. Oh, and it is. The height is 20. Did I get lucky there? That's 20 millimeters. I got lucky. I wasn't even thinking about that, but that's because this is going to insert in here and it's only going to come down 20 millimeters or 10 millimeters. Once it comes down to 10 millimeters and stop, then the distance from the bottom of that slot to here can't be more than 10 millimeters or else it wouldn't be sitting flush. But I got lucky without even thinking about that. All right, this is ready for me to cut. So let's send this to the laser and see what we get. And I'm not gonna make you wait for all that. I'll come back and let you see the finished product. Okay, so we've got it off the laser, got her assembled and Turned out pretty nice for what I'm going to be using it for. I'll make some nicer cards to hang the earrings on, but overall, it's a nice project. The easel and the two reinforcements. Now, I did make a couple of changes to the file that I'm going to have available online. Of course, I've taken my branding off, and I actually raised up the entire grid up just a little so that this isn't as close to the bottom once the earrings are on. If you're going to put any kind of information down here, it's not covered. So the entire nine grid is raised, uh, and I changed the layout of the, uh, the hooks. In fact, let me let's see here file save as this is going to be the new whip desktop whip save yes all right so let me open up this file as it will be available online open earring stand Now let me show you here in Lightburn. Put this down. <clears throat> so it is going to require two pieces of 300 by 300 or 12 by 12 material. As I said, I've raised the grid of nine higher up on the board. Still plenty of room to put any branding if you want. But more information to put down here and have plenty of room for your earrings. But this is what I want to show you. Um, if you if you obtain this file, do not do anything with uh, the way these are laid out if you want to save time on your cutting. This is on a toolpath, and you can use the toolpath to actually help you frame your material on your laser bed. But what I have done, I have nested these in here as tightly as I can get without wasting as much product as possible. I could have nested these in a different format, and, but it would have used a little bit more material. This is saving material and not time with the hooks. But on the easel and on the braces, I've got those docked right up against each other. And if you will go into your optimization settings, Turn on your remove overlapping lines, and uh, I've got my distance set at a 0 0.05 millimeter, and say okay. And now if you look at, if we select, in fact, we'll look at uh, just these pieces here, and look at the preview. What's gonna happen when this cuts? It's going to cut out that first piece in its, in its entirety, but we notice when it comes to this second piece, as it goes up and starts cutting, once it gets to here, it recognizes this line's already been cut. So that jumps all the way down to here and makes just the next cut until it gets to the point where it says, hey, that's been cut, jumps that and comes to there and starts cutting. 
and to show you that in real time I'll just hit play so you can see she's playing along and then all of a sudden it gets there and jumps starts cutting goes to the next one starts cutting and jumps and jumps so these are shared lines in the design and the laser will not cut them twice if you turn on that o remove overlapping lines and you have your tolerance set to that 0 .050 and one last thing if you either purchase my files online or you download them from Laser Makers Realm if they're available there, or you're a patron, or patron a patron on Patreon. I try not to put anything out there for sale or for free that I haven't tested and tried myself, and try to make sure that they're as user friendly as possible. And in this case, what you get is a file that is ready for you to cut with any size oops I just undid that any size material by simply resizing the slots and I was trying to move this down to the same layer there we go I've already tested this so I know it works if you select this whole thing now it is set up at a 2.25 millimeter thickness on the slots and if you don't know how to tell that if you're not watching this video while you're doing it, all you have to do is grab your ruler, select it, and measure the width of one of those slots. And we need to be in millimeters. And there you go. 2.25 millimeters. Now that's that slot thickness on the backboard. It's the slot thickness of the hook because there's 2.25. Up here, 2.25. I can assure you that all of the slots on this pro project are at 2.25. Once you've identified what the thickness is, all you have to do, select the entire thing, come to tools, resize slots in selection, we're going to change our slot width, and once you put in your old material thickness, here it, I've already had it in there at 2.25, because I've tested this for you. It's already selected all of the slots in this entire project. So you don't have 2.25 millimeter wood, but you have 3 millimeter wood. So you put in the old material thickness, 2.25, new material thickness, 3 millimeters, and say OK. And it just resized every slot in here for your material desired thickness. So I try to make my designs extremely friendly, ready to use and quality they're tested and tried and true it turned out really nice it will be available online and you want to stay tuned if you haven't uh, this is uh, today is March 3rd 2023 we will be having a live stream on Sunday the 5th you want to be tuned in for an announcement there on how you can get your hands on these files and until then I am Steve Hobo with wood, and I'm out.